You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. We're going to get started with our Training Thursday show today. Looking forward to bringing you the ins and outs and kind of the details on how to maximize your interval workouts and get more benefit with actually less time put in. So that's the nice thing that we know about interval training right now. And a lot of people have been converting over from longer distance cardio to interval-based cardio because we know there's better research on it in terms of body transformation, fat loss, and believe it or not, both anaerobic and aerobic-based benefits and conditioning, which means that, yes, your heart and lungs and your stamina are going to increase, but also your body's muscle tone and your muscle that you can put forth with that anaerobic threshold, how hard you can push yourself can increase as well. So I want to go over all of that today, but really even more so, what I want to do is share with you the five mistakes that most people are making when they're doing interval training and by by teaching you those five mistakes or those myths, we can get rid of that and we can also use this as a teaching lesson so you get more out of it. And again, the great thing about interval training is that anyone can do it and, and I'll be honest, you don't need to do it for more than 20 minutes and if you're doing it for more than 20 minutes, you're probably doing too much of it. So I want to explain that right now, start to get into it. So Interval training in general, think of it this way. It's your body's ability to go all out doing something for anywhere from about 10 seconds until 90 seconds. So think of it, it's a short window, a minute and a half of total work before you have to rest. And through scientific studies, what they found is that the human body can basically push all out for somewhere between one minute and two minutes maximum. That's it. So if you think about going all out, doing one specific thing, like let's just talk about like a sprint straight ahead, how fast and how far could you run at maximum output? And it's somewhere between 60 seconds and two minutes, depending on your level of training, like how long you've been doing it for, what's your aerobic, anaerobic based threshold and capacity, what you can, can you push through in terms of lactate, all of those different things. And again, Really, no one could push past two minutes. Most people can go for almost a minute, and and that pretty much goes for anybody, all out before they just have to drop, before they literally have to say, okay, my body's not moving anymore. It's shutting down. I have to stop. So that's what we're looking for for a good interval. Now, we want to think of it this way, though. We don't want to literally crush our body because we don't want to just do one of these. We're going to do a bunch of them as you're going to see. And really, my first myth or my first training tip right now comes with that uh, number five. So we'll count down from five through one, one being the most important today. And the fifth one, number five is really this. This this is the fifth thing that I can think of right now in my top five that people are not doing correctly and that they're not doing a warm up one or two interval. Meaning like I've spoken about this in the past, but when people are doing interval based training, let's just say you're doing an interval only workout. And let's just say it is sprints. It's sprints around a track or maybe it's hill sprints is that they go just from maybe doing a couple stretches to just all out sprinting at a hundred percent. Like they're just literally going all out. And the problem is that's actually an unsafe way of doing your first interval. You have your greatest likelihood really of getting injured on that first interval or maybe second. And that's because your body is not warmed up properly, both from a physiological neuromuscular perspective, meaning that your nervous system and your muscles have have to know how to do that exercise properly. So you're going to teach your body over the first one or two intervals, even though I know that you know how to run or all these things, is you're going to teach it that specific pattern that you would like to do for the next five or 10 or so intervals. And so what you want to do is you want to do your first interval. You also want to get your body temperature raised. You want to get a little bit of heat built up within the body. You want to actually create a little bit more pliability in your muscles, ligaments, and tendons. And that happens after you've done a little bit of a, whether it's a light jog or whether it's a dynamic warm 
warm up, which I recommend, and go, you can go back to previous Cabral concepts on our Training Thursdays, and you'll actually see a few of my dynamic warm ups that I've recommended in the past. But today we'll stick to intervals. So, what I want you to do is I want you to do your first interval, whatever you could do for all out. I want you to do it at about 50, 60%. That's it. So it's not like you're just going to like, if like, again, if you're doing a hill sprint, you're not just going to walk up or jog up the hill. You're going to run up the hill, but you're going to do that at about 50 to 60%, which means you're about half intensity. That's it. You're going to walk back down that hill. And then your second one is going to be not quite, again, not quite all out intensity, but this time about 80% to maybe 90%. Okay. So you're really pushing yourself that time, but not all the way. You're not going to just jump right out of the gates. You're going to warm up into it. You're going to run, run, run and get a little faster as you're progressing through it. Again, you'll walk that back down that hill. And this is just one example. I'll give you many in the, in the, uh, minutes to come. But then on that third one, now you can go all out. Okay. Your body's learned over the first couple sets, you know, and you can call an interval an actual set because it is. It's essentially an an anaerobic based exercise done somewhere between 10 seconds and 60 seconds. That's going to be for our purposes. Remember, when we're doing our intervals, they're not going to be the 90 second or two minute. That might be like a race day. If you think about it in track, I used to run the half mile, which is called the 800 meter. And when you're running that in track, that's essentially what I thought, and and a lot of people do think is the hardest race in, in all of track and field. And the reason is, that you're basically pushing your body all out as long as it can go for about a little over two minutes for kind of top runners, and it is just crushing. So when you get to that last 200, you're at right around the two-minute mark, and you have nothing left in the tank. You are just literally pushing through fumes, and it's a brutal, brutal race. It is literally a a half-a-mile sprint. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying that, but in the future, as you get your body stronger, more adapted, you can certainly try that out and just say, "I'm okay, I'm going to run for basically two times around a 400 meter track. If you have a track near you, you're lucky. It's great to have those. Uh, or you can run essentially a half mile run. And it is tough. It really is. It's not what I recommend because there's no second interval after that. That's it. So you've done a warm up. You did your 800. That literally you're done for the day. It is a crushing race. So an interval is something that you can do five to 10 times. And again, I've done many shows in interval training before, but where our purposes are going to be this. In my opinion, a 2040 interval is absolutely the best. We'll talk about the work to rest ratio in just a moment, but that 20 second sprint, maybe 30 second sprint is absolutely fantastic. Some people will be able to work up to 40 to 60 seconds, but if you're a beginner or even if you, even if you're not like the sprints that I do are about 20 seconds to maybe 30 seconds. It allows me for maximum acceleration, maximum speed, all out you know, input right there. I just give everything I have and then it keeps it safe as well. Cause really it's towards the last 10 seconds or so. If you're doing a longer 60 second sprint that you will start to break down. And that a lot of times that happens with form. So you have my tip number five, which is essentially you want to make sure that you're doing one to two warm up intervals, whether you're at the gym or not, you want to get right into it. Now, the second tip is this, is that you want to do your interval training after a weight training workout, not before. So even if it's body weight based intervals, which I'm going to get to in just a moment, or it's hill sprints or it's stadium stair runs or any of the, one of those things, it's better to do after a weight workout. And the reason is this, a weight workout is more neurologically complicated. All that means is that from a neuromuscular perspective, what that means is that your brain is telling your nervous system to tell your muscles how to work. Okay. So when you're doing weight training and you're doing unilateral based moves, which is kind of like one legged or one arm, you're doing Romanian deadlifts or any of those things. It's challenging for the nervous system as much as it's challenging for the muscles. So you really, when you are doing a workout in general, now there, there again, there are always reasons why you would want to change this up like 1% of the time, like pre-fatiguing muscles, those types of things. But we're not talking about that today. What we want to do when we're working out is choose the most neurologically complicated. That means the hardest to balance, hardest to work, takes the most strength and power output, maybe it's plyometrics. You always want to do those first in your workout after you've done your warm up. And the reason is that it takes the most amount of basically concentration, effort, and output from a neurological perspective. So I'm not going to turn that into today's show either. All of these topics could be their own 10, 15 minute show. But what you want to do there is just get that out of the way. Now, afterwards, sprinting or hill sprint or even mountain climbers. Again, we'll talk about these in just a moment. They're pretty straightforward. Like they're easier to do than your weight training workout. And again, there's great research, which I pointed out before in a previous Cabral concept on if you leave your workout 
doing even just a few intervals, like three or four or five, you'll actually get more fat burning effect for the next 24 to 36 hours if you do your interval training at the end of the workout. So really, there's no downside to doing your intervals at the end of the workout, only upside. And that's what I'd recommend. The last point to that is if you do your intervals after your workout, you're already basically warmed up as well. So really, really, it's easy to get into that so-called fat burning zone because your body's primed. I mean, it really is. Your blood sugar is at least stable if not a little bit lowered, you're, you're in really good shape to really work on overall neuromuscular work as well as body fat burning, all of those great things. So number three is this, is that when you're doing your intervals, you have to vary it, meaning that your body will become adapted. If every day you go to the gym and you do chest presses and bicep curls and you do the same exact exercise, your body is not going to get benefit after somewhere around six weeks or so, unless you're pushing it to some new level, which is really hard after six weeks of doing the same exercise to go up in weight or up in reps, you're going to plateau. It's the same thing with interval training. And so that's why, in my opinion, even more so than with weight training is to vary those intervals. And I would actually vary them. If you're doing interval training once a week, then you could do the same interval for four weeks straight. That's not a big deal. But if you're doing interval training twice a week to three times a week, I would actually choose different intervals to do each time. So I wouldn't simply do sprints each time. Now, sprints are great. like They're never going to go out of fashion. But if you literally want to get additional benefits in terms of body transformation, like you're trying to work on the serratus anterior muscles, the anterior serratus below the chest muscles right to the side and under the armpits, or you want to work on your obliques, or you want to work on different parts of your body, I would recommend you challenge yourself in a little different variation. So what I would look to do is this. I would look at all the different variations of intervals that you can think about and just try them on on different days. So again, we already know somewhere the sweet spot's somewhere around five to 10 intervals maximum. Again, I'm okay with if you don't want to count your first one to two of your warm-up as, as actual intervals and you want to do 10 more after that, but that would really be the max. And the reason is, if you think about this, is that, well, that's my next tip. So I'll give you that in just one second. So I just want to give you a few variations. So think of this. You could do jump roping. You could do rebounding. You could do kettlebell swings. You could do burpees. You could do mountain climbers. Again, you could do the hill sprints. You could even do a sprint in the elliptical. It's not the best, but you could. Upright bike sprints are absolutely fantastic. A rowing machine is a great way to do interval training as well. My favorite way, I think one of the most intense ways to do it is with the Airdyne bike. Schwinn makes an Airdyne bike that has both handles for moving your arms and your legs and you're sitting upright. So basically you're doing upright bike and rowing with the arms. It is extremely intense. It's one of my favorite ways to do interval training. It is full body. So of course I love outdoor sprints, uphill sprints, but the Schwinn Aerodyne mic is absolutely fantastic as well. I'm going to link that up in the show notes today. And it takes up such a small footprint. Literally, it might be the size of like a dryer in your home. Like that's it. It's not this huge footprint. You really put it anywhere. So I'll link one of those up in the show notes today because you've never heard of it before. And so now that second tip, that second, you know, mistake that people are making with interval training is they're not going 100%. So that's even why when I go back to my warm up, my fifth tip, which I gave you right there, fifth mistake is that if you do an interval that's like 50 or 60% your best for your first one, and then you do another one that's somewhere around 80 to 90%, then you know you're not at your maximum. So then after that, you're literally going all out. Now, you don't want to go... So, I've seen people sprint so fast, they literally fall down. Now, it's great. They are definitely going 100%. They're probably doing 110%. But try to pull back just a little bit before that, right? Right before you fall. You don't want that, that intense. But you really do want to take it to 100%. Now, 100% for you is going to be different than the person right beside you. Don't compare yourself to any, anyone else. Like Legitimately, when you're working out, the time that injuries happen or when you're trying to push yourself past your current capabilities. Now, remember I said current. Your capabilities can and will change in four to six weeks from now. As you keep sticking with an exercise, you will approve upon it. That's the biggest thing. It's called specific adaptation to impose demands. It means if you keep asking your body to do the same thing, it will adapt and get better. That's the beautiful thing about exercise is people are intimidated. They're afraid to do it. They don't want to do it because they've never done it. Well, you're never going to get better at it if you don't start to do it in the first place. So, being perfect, no big deal. Just go to your capability, that's it. But remember, 
You do not get the fat burning effect. When you read these studies, you read the research, you're like, okay, for the next 31 to 36 hours, I'm going to be better tapping into body fat. That wasn't the best way to say that. But I'm going to be, my body's become, let's say, more fat adapted. And part of the way I look at this is this, is that your body's going to be better able to use glucose. Because that's a big part of the research, a big part of the studies. When they look at type 2 diabetics and they do interval-based training, they see that their body is better utilizing glucose, better utilizing the sugar and carbs that they eat. So that makes a lot of sense to me. It's like do interval training, especially if you have blood sugar base or blood sugar irregularity or dysregularity. Is It's a great exercise to choose. But again, it has to be all out. So that's why I gave you the range, five to 10 intervals. That's it. Five to 10. Don't do 10 if you've never done five. Like if you've never done intervals or it's been six months, do five. That's it. And count your first two, meaning like, okay, one and two warm up. Now do three really hard ones. I'm telling you, if you do three really hard ones, it's worth 10 of the 50, 50, 60, 70%, whatever it might be. That's where you want to be. Now, my last tip, my last mistake, the big mistake and the absolute biggest one that I see people making is that they're not giving themselves enough rest. Now you can say, well, how would that possibly be the biggest mistake? And that's this. If you don't give yourself enough rest, you are cheating on your work phase. That means in interval training, there's a work to rest ratio. Here's the deal. If you sprint, which a lot of people do for 60 seconds, and you take a 30 to 60 second rest, I'm telling you right now, your next interval is not 100%. It can't be. It's an incomplete recovery. That's what that's called. That's called incomplete recovery intervals. So there's a time and place for those as well. Like Tabata, for example, is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, and it's four minutes long. It's eight total rounds. Now, that's called an incomplete recovery interval. You don't always want to be doing those. Those aren't necessarily always the best, okay? What I'm saying to you is this is that unless you rest between intervals, just like you have to rest between maybe doing a set of chin-ups or pull-ups, think about it. If you went right away into those, how many could you do? Well, not even half. You would have no strength left. And that's because you need the ATP, the adenosine triphosphate, to start to recover within your muscle cells as well. And it's not just that. There's other fuel systems within the body working too. You need to clear lactate. You need to clear calcium ions. There's a lot of things that you need to clear from your muscle tissues if you went all out in that anaerobic-based capacity. So what I'm saying to you is this, the proper rest to work ratio, or let's put it this way, the proper work, which means how long your sprint should be to your rest should be anywhere between one to two or one to one at the very least to one and five. Okay. Some examples of this, my favorite interval to give beginners, which I give all the time is a 20 second sprint and a 40 second rest. That seems to be like the perfect sweet spot for anyone from a beginner to intermediate. Okay. Now, When you get more advanced, a lot of the time, you actually need more rest, not less. And again, I know that that might sound strange, but it's the truth. And the reason is you're able to push your body at a higher capacity which means you you actually use up more ATP. That's the truth. Like You are better adapted at using larger motor uh, units of inside your body of muscles and muscle fiber. And what that means is that you need a little longer to recover. The best example of this is when you look at powerlifters. They're doing maybe one rep, two rep, three reps max. That's it. And they're taking five minutes between sets and their set might have lasted 30 seconds. That's it. Now, why are they doing that? Well, they're trying, they know by three minutes, you're going to get about 97% ATP recovery. By five minutes, you might get 98, 99%. It's not a hundred, but it's, it's as much as you can get. And they need all of that to be able to put forth their next best set. And I know that you're not a power lifter and I know that you're only not doing one, two or three reps, but the same does apply for intervals. If you're doing 30 seconds of a sprint all out, you really should rest 60 seconds. You might even want to rest 90 seconds to two minutes. It depends on how hard that interval was. You need to look at your recovery. Now, you don't have to be completely rested before you start your next one, but your heart rate does have to be down and you have to feel good and ready to start that next sprint all out because it has to be all out. So again, my recommendation is this. If you're doing a one-to-one ratio right now, let's say you're doing one minute on, one minute off. It's my recommendation that you take that down to 30 seconds on, 60 seconds off. Try that. Try going 30 seconds all out because a lot of people are doing 60 seconds right now. I know you are. A lot of people are doing 60 seconds. And when they do that, they're holding a little back because they know they can't make it all the way to 60 seconds if they go an all out, full out sprint. That's the truth. And they know they're not getting enough rest to recover. So what I'm saying is take it down to 30 seconds, go all out, rest for 60 to 90 seconds, see how you do that next one. Then try five to 10 of those for the day. I'm telling you, you're going to get a lot more out of a 
one to two or one to three work to rest ratio than you will a lot of times from a one to one. I really believe that. And that's because you cannot put 100% of effort into those next few intervals if you are not recovering between intervals as well as your body physiologically needs to. And that especially means as you get to intervals five, six, seven, eight, nine, and maybe even 10, you need that recovery. And that's because you want everyone to count. Thank you everyone for tuning into another Cabral Concept. I appreciate each and every one of your listeners and please do feel free to share this show with anyone it could help. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, You can order an at-home lab test or lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the equal life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests or to set up a free lab selection call, To find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.